these are one of our uh, abandoned houses. But there's actually a much deeper, much more inspiring story to this. Oh, that goes through me. It goes through your wrist. <laughs> this is the way I came in. It's a bit easier now, it's light. I came in this way. I didn't have any chickens getting in my way though. It's easier when it's light. I learned a new term from our guide, Kawasaka. That's what they do. They Kawasaka. Nice guy, very, very nice guy. Going up is the difficult part here, really. You'll see why in a moment. They told me to go up on the left, right? I forgot. I think it was. It was the left, they told me, but that's got water on it. I don't know where to go up, eh? <laughs> Everything changes on these roads very quickly. When I came down, they said go up the left. <laughs> I came down on the left. It was not fun. I remember this one too. <laughs> this handles it fine though. It's a good machine. Here's the other part. I've got to pick again which side I'm going to go up. Yep, 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 not there, not there, not there, no, 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 back, back, back. Yep, that's it. <laughs> ah! That worked out fine, the V-Strom's a good machine. Handles it. Leaving behind one village of rice terraces. Let's get back on the road and we're going to head to other rice terraces. UNESCO World Heritage Rice Terraces in Mayoyao, Ifugao. It's their festival at the moment. I missed the parade because I got held up an extra night here, but that happens, that's life. Let's take the road, let's, uh, let's see what happens. No idea. We're in Mountain Province, okay. So today we're going up into these mountains instead, from one set of mountains to another. Today, the distance doesn't seem so far, but it's gonna take three hours twists and turns through the mountains as we approach the town of Mayoyao, somewhere so vibrant and yet so underrated. <laughs> So in Tagalog, this is called the Bahag, got to say it like that. In Ifugao, it's the Lenchon. It's the traditional dress of the Ifugao people. So normally it's worn without underwear because it's basketball. Be wearing it with because there might be some moments otherwise. Uh, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> it was fun. And this one's made from royal colours. That's what they call it. They said these are the royal colours. It's nice to see this, these kind of things kept alive. If a guy was really known for the heirloom rice, especially Mayo Yao has some of the best. Thick grain, really delicious. Now I've been invited to judge something that I might actually be able to judge. I might actually have a bit of expertise. Local vegetables, mostly just um, sautéed. Yeah, the herbs are what you find here in the highlands. Just leeks, onion leeks, onions, um, ginger and tomato. Uh, Inners of chickens, I think. That's uh, interesting. What's this one? Uh, freshwater fish. Kachu. Kachu. Yes. Here in Mayuya, we just generally call this suman. Everything that's wrapped is just suman. And this one is pinang it. Although they could be different sizes, are pinang it. More vegetable. Oh, this is fish. Mm. River. Mm. Fried sweet potato for dessert. And there are many ways to serve these dishes. This pinangette is really good. I'm not sure how I describe it, but it's a bit more tender, a bit softer than you'd usually get in these kinds of dishes. That's my new surprise here. And the little river fish. 
that was cooked really uniquely. But I didn't try the Gabby because since I had this tattoo, they told me no Gabby for three days. So, gotta keep to that. Shame, because it looks delicious and I quite like it, but no. Right now I'm being led to my destiny, I was gonna say. Not my destiny, just where I'm gonna stay tonight. Where are we going? <laughs> Going to, to I'm being led down a very, very dark path past oh, past hollow blocks. Oh, there's someone with a flashlight. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> so, what's what's the story of this place? Um, these are one of our abandoned houses here in this uh, sitio. So the local government is taking care of uh, the rice field. And of course, together with the rice field is the native house. So um, these native houses are, um, be, we are offering them as uh, like accommodation for a full uh, local experience. Oh, where do I, oh, okay, there's somewhere to sleep. Oops, oh, nice floor. <laughs> that's not tilapia finisher, however. That's what I used to use. No, oh, there's beds, it's quite nice actually. So this is your living room. That's your bedroom. Oh, uh, oh I, have, I have pots so I can cook. Yes. That's your granary on the top. There's <laughs> so much rice. Yeah. I think I could stay here for weeks. And these beds are... Oh, let's try. I'll be alright. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah. I like this place a lot. You know, this is pretty unique. This is pretty cool. I didn't know what on earth this was going to be like, but this is actually kind of exciting. And there is a very, very solid lock. It's, it's even got a towel. Very social. What a way to wake up. And then you see this pine bark here. That's what they've taught me to use, is that there is a caretaker here to start the fire. Very, very cool. I need some tea, that's why. You see how tight these joints are? Like the Ifugawa are really master craftsmen. And there's not really many nails in the original structure of these. They just use these giant wooden pegs that they bash through. And they have to get that exact as well. Intricacy, really. I love how these houses are designed as well. I like this bit underneath. It's kind of an addictive life with the silence. But I, I, do, I do understand why people leave. I understand that financially, if you only have a small vice terrace, that's gonna be difficult for you. But still, I think a lot of people will go to the city and end up missing this. Just the simplicity. <coughs> There's a different set of problems wherever you go. Actually, I'll be back in a while. But first, I'm gonna go to a different area where they've really been restoring the rice terraces. And I've gotta watch where I'm going. Above the town, at around 1,400 metres above sea level, locals have restored a section of ancient rice terraces that were reclaimed by the forest. Our ancestors built the rice terraces because of their love to the generation. Mm. But, uh, they have uh, food, it may be a little rice land, but at least you have the property to show. According to Bayer, that was built 2000 BC. Ancient civilization. Yes. The time right now is 7.36. So let's see if a 15 minute trek in Ifugao is the same as a 15 minute trek in Benguet. I, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah, walk sideways so you don't stare at the... View. The agony. <laughs> I can still feel the agony. <laughs> That's 15 minutes. Only. It's organic 
poison from fit catching fish. Oh, I'm glad you said that. I was about to eat it. <laughs> I was really about to eat that. That organic poison for catching fish. Yeah, but you're not a fish. I'm not a fish. Should we try this out? Where's the hospital? But the rice terraces hold so much food that can be eaten. If you have fish in the rice paddies, you have rice to eat, you have vegetable to eat. It's a manual work, so it will contribute to your health. Now comes the tourism industry, the employment, etc. It's, it's a multiple... Uh... 15 minutes going up. <laughs> okay. So that part at the bottom doesn't count. Got 15 more minutes. <laughs> it just goes up and up like a stairway to heaven. These ones here, they don't have water, so they're being converted to vegetable gardens. Bad tag now, but no, no, in the distance I see another one. <laughs> yeah, going sideways here is a good thing. <sighs> so the house I was staying at is below the school, right at the bottom. We'll go to supply of water, the Pabayaan, and we did a project of restoration. We need a irrigation here. What are the cans for? The path is not easy, but there's a purpose behind all of this, to maintain the ancestors' legacy for many more generations. Harvesting still done manually, using this simple tool. Wow, so it really was the forest claims it back. But it used to be terraces yeah. and abandoned. Yeah, abandoned, so it's not the primary forest. Okay. This is Tenagon rice. Tenagon means yearly. So they're really growing the famous, famous Mayoria rice here. It's the heirloom. And when it rains, you can borrow. <laughs> so you can see the original terraces here. That's really original. The rest of this has just got covered with mud, of course, but... So not only are there the pikau, the Japanese eels in here, they have the watercress, the gabi, all of that stuff that was served last night is all here. So it's really integrated. It's very organic. There's yeah. a traditional um, vegetable. It's the onchoi. It's very tasty. And let's not talk about the 15 minutes. We need to go make lunch. For us to say that we will sustain this for another 2,000 years to come. It's because so I, uh, for me, that is a treasure. Ah. At least the roof's big enough for me. Yeah. I think this is the wrong way around. Ah, it's a long way up. a long way to the granary. Oh, here. Ah, that's the milling. Yeah. Threshing. <laughs> the threshing, sorry. Oh, yeah. And here's my Wallace, my tiny Wallace. Oh, that's itchy, yeah. Oh, everything has a use. Yeah. Now it's time to mill the rice manually. Okay. So you have, to, of course, your stands. Maybe something like this, and then Now we can start to see the red grains. That goes through me. It goes through your wrist. <laughs> Both hands in the center. Ah, oh, here? Yeah. Both hands. Yep. Boom. 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 Where's the rice mill? I want to go there. It's hard work. Really got to work for your food. 
So in between the rounds of pounding, you've got to take it out, separate the something from the something. It's a hard process, a long process, that's for sure. The shell is relatively light. The rice itself is hard, it's solid. Red rice is even harder because the shell is thinner. I really just wonder who figured out this was the way to get food. We have an apprentice. <laughs> One final pounding, then it can be done. All that work just to get one kilo of rice to cook. It's a lot of work, it really is. Oh, chickens. Are you eating raw rice? No. Mm, <laughs> I'm gonna try raw rice, I've never done, I've, actually I have done this before. Mm. And someone at some point worked out that if you make a fire and get some water and boil it, it's even better. I wonder who did that. Adam? We took that back up to the town for lunch before I got back on the road again. So as I leave my Oyao behind again, it reminds me, it's just one of those places that draws me back. Yes, I came here a year ago, but I find myself just finding more stories to tell. It opens itself up even more. And just an amazing, amazing place where you feel its history. You feel this cultural heritage that they're trying to restore more and more. Now it's, it's almost 2 p.m. I was meant to leave two hours ago. That's life, <laughs> but I got ahead now out of the mountains altogether, onwards, I think. Oh, hello, nice view. The Snake River Valley, always an awesome drive and a fitting goodbye to the Northern Adventures. Tomatoes, okay, going up the tram line, it's working. That's awesome. Everyone's, all the tram lines are working today. Oh, they're building a house. This is always what I remember of Banawi. That crazy high eight story stuff. Banawi was really my introduction to the Cordilleras. Introduction to, well, the provinces of the Philippines, in fact, back in 2016. And certainly my introduction to these rice terraces, the UNESCO World Heritage Rice Terraces in Hapao, in Batad, and that's where I really saw their beauty. Ah, and this is the road I came in on, except I think I was asleep at that point. Now I'm heading back the other way. We're back on the lowlands, but there's just one more mountain pass to clear. So instead of going up the Dalton Pass, which is probably gonna be full of trucks, I'm taking the side road, the alternative route, which is kind of new, through Maliko. I really don't regret this at all. This is awesome. The valley, the towns at the top, the forest, it's all awesome. Man, good decision. Very good decision. And the road over Maliko takes us through stunning pine forest and such a great mountain vista. There was a tank in there, but it's too late for me to go in, so that's not gonna happen today, unfortunately. Whoa, look at that. Man, these mountains were actually incredibly, incredibly important during the Second World War, fighting against the Japanese. There were some very important battles that happened here. Dalton Pass, then also on this side of Maliko. I want to explore this area again in the future. I like just riding over these places because I don't know until I go. So the most important thing is to go and have a look. Oh dear. Let's go down. From here, it's just a one hour night run to Nueva Ecija. I'm certainly not up in the mountains anymore. I'm down in the lowlands in a normal hotel. 
which has, I think it has two bathrooms and there's a desk in the bathroom. Huh. One shower, one CR. Okay. And a desk in the bathroom in case you're ever feeling really pensive. I don't know, I got all this food. This food's from a great lady. Great old lady, she's still cooking. I didn't ask her name, of course. I never ask anyone's name because I forget them. Right underneath the archway coming into San Jose City in Nueva Ecija. Nueva Ecija! I can't even pronounce it right. That was an awesome last bit of mountains in Maliko, though. That was something that was special as well. That was really, in its own way, unique. But, well, I guess it's a fitting end to the adventures in the mountains. I'll be back, of course, but now is really the right time to come back down and do something not in the mountains, <laughs> to start heading towards home again. Now's the right time. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to eat this food before it goes cold. And I'll see you when I see you. <laughs>